We're here at the Beachwave in Maui Pro, the last stop for the women. A world title race unfolding here. This is a massive swell. It's six to eight foot pumping. Carissa Moore, does anyone surf this way better than her? I don't think so. Here we go, this is it. Lakey Peterson, as we know, in a must win situation. The reason a world title is so important to me is that whatever you do in life, why would you not want to be the best at that in the world? There's been moments in the past three years where like, I've wanted to give up, but there's just this feeling like I'm not done yet. I still have a lot to give. Guess what? The world title is going to happen at the Bonsai Pipeline. We got an exciting year lined up. Three guys have a shot at winning the title. It's come down to us. I'm content. I'm happy where I am. I got in the mindset of like, OK, Triple Crown's coming up, and uh, I really want to win one. I'm excited for, for what's to come. You know, if you've made it this far and you've qualified to have a shot at the title, prove yourself here at Pipeline. Chris are driving hard. Big flow in oh, transition. Oh, wow. Jordy having a look at this one. The crowd turning up for their hometown hero. Julian Wilson, wide open pit. Amazing play for Julian Wilson. Meanwhile, Lakey Peterson tagging that one off the top. And Lakey Peterson hangs off for the victory. The last event of the Women's World Tour, the Beach Waver Maui Pro, is one week away. Lakey Peterson sits in second place on the Jeep leaderboard. She'll have to win the event to have a shot at the world title. And while Carissa Moore may be out of contention for a fourth career world title, a win in Maui would be the perfect launch into 2019. As the event nears, swell forecasts for Honolulu Bay are projecting double overhead surf which would provide a fitting and challenging conclusion to the year and the chase for the world title. Honolulu Bay is one of my favorite waves in the whole world. It's so picturesque. It's a point break, one of the biggest, most powerful point breaks ever, I think. <laughs> I've got some of my worst wipeouts out there. Yeah, it's, it's a challenging wave. This is the best venue that the women have on tour, I believe. So it's exactly how you want a world title to go down in really good surf. And that's exactly what it looks like is, is lining up for us. To be a world champ, you have to be able to surf big waves and small waves, powerful and weak, point breaks and beach breaks and, you know, lefts and rights, everything. You should be well-rounded. My coach, Micah Nickens, who I was kind of working with on Maui, I kept checking in every day. I was like, how big do you think it's going to be? How big do you think it's going to be? And he's like, it's going to be six to eight with some occasional 10-footers. And I was like, I never surfed 10-foot surf, ever. And so I totally freaked out. And, we have this WSL girls group message, and I was like, you guys, this swell's gonna be ginormous. And it made me feel a little better because everyone kind of chimed in, and they're like, yeah, we're gonna bring our Waimea boards out, and everyone was a little nervous. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I was scared. Carissa may play up her fears, but her three world titles are proof that she can excel in waves of consequence. As for Lakey Peterson, one piece of her search for a first world title has been grappling with the challenge of plus size surf. The big wave thing's interesting because I like grew up so fearless as a kid and I was a great swimmer. You know, I did swim team, I played water polo. Like it wasn't like I had this fear of the ocean. Um, it just came from one really bad experience I had and I got taken out on a big day that the person should not have taken me out on. I didn't know better, I was pretty young and got really smoked by this big set. At the time, I was like, I thought I was gonna die. That moment just freaked me out. So that's kind of what put me off on the wrong foot with the big wave stuff. I was terrified of bigger waves and then I made the tour. It's not a big wave tour, but you just gotta handle like any condition and a world champ should be able to do that. And if you're on the tour, you should be able to do that. My feeling was like, yeah, I was like drowned in fear. So Mike has just been amazing to work with. Mike Parsons is a legendary big wave surfer. So I know he knows exactly how much I can probably handle. And that's why he's been such a great person to work on this with and help me kind of overcome that fear. And I mean, I'm still working on it. For every surfer, 
There are moments in the water that test their limits and their fortitude. For Lakey, one such moment came in the 2015 Margaret River Pro in Western Australia. I still remember so clear as day, I had Joanna Fay in a heat and Nikki Van Dyke, and this heat was bombing. My first wave, I was like, <laughs> honestly, I was like, it. like, <laughs> okay, just, it, just, you're going, go. I like got a wave under my belt, and then I get back out and I'm waiting, and this set came and I was like, oh, Mayday. Like it was just like all these fears in one set. It was like the worst scenario I could think in my head of what could happen. I was like, it's happening. And I remember like the last thought I had before I like bailed and went under the wave was like, your nightmare is coming true right now. And it was almost like God was just going, okay, here we go. It's your time to just deal with this right now. And I bailed my board. My broke my 6'8", broke my leash. And I took like whatever, three or four more on the head. Jet ski gets me. I remember looking at Mike and he was so psyched when I got that pounded. He was like, yeah, from the channel. And I got on my other board and then won the heat. Here comes Lakey Peterson. Beautiful takeoff, deep bottom turn. And then every year since then, felt like that heat was just like this breaking point. It was just like, you don't need to be captivated by that fear anymore, you know? It's all good. It's cool to have come from that to like, I kind of want the challenge now. I think I just feel like excited. I'm excited to see how I can navigate that and I'm just like super excited to enjoy this moment. For the men, the Billabong Pipe Masters is still weeks away. But for Jordy Smith, currently ranked sixth on the Jeep leaderboard, there's another goal to chase in the meantime, the Vans Triple Crown of Surfing. Obviously, I'm not in like a, a title race or anything, but um, for some reason, I'm just very, I'm content, I'm happy where I am. I got in the mindset of like, okay, Triple Crown's coming up. The Triple Crown is basically the next best thing to a world title. And, uh, I really want to win one. Hi, right, brother. How Good. Are you? To help him prepare for his upcoming contests, Jordy has turned to North Shore training guru, Kid Peligro, who espouses a form of Brazilian jiu-jitsu to help surfers gain an extra edge. Okay, what we do is, uh, it's called ginástica natural, a mode of uh, training that was developed in Brazil for jiu-jitsu and martial arts, and we adapted it to surfing. So. A lot of the importance of the training is just the flexibility, the agility, and the breathing. Most of you want to breathe out. So this transforms that power to here, and then that power from here to there. Left arm roll, right knee in front. For me, being loose and limber, it's at least 20 to 30% more beneficial to me, just because of my size. You know, for some other people, that could be the strength thing. But for me, it's flexibility. I've already got so much power. Everyone's training a lot like this with weights like this but surfers we don't surf like this yes. you know we kind of surf like this yes normally i need like a wave or two to get like into that you know that rhythm that zone where yeah. you're like i can i can go for a big one now instead of starting here and then your third wave you're here you're starting here and your third wave you're here thanks bro I like to say it's like Ferraris. They're Ferraris. They, they don't need new engines. They don't need new wheels. They just need to release a parking brake here or there. And then when you let those go. When that moment does present itself, it's all about the work done prior to that moment. Gaining those percentages allows me to surf free. The contest at Honolulu is fast approaching, and Lakey Peterson and Carissa Moore 
are making final preparations before heading out to Maui. For Lakey, that means reviewing some recent performances with her coach, Mike Parsons. I've been riding the large Chloe's like all the time, almost the whole time over here. The 510 definitely felt like incredible last night yeah. to me. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going to start kind of low. That was incredible. Jeez. That was one of the best turns I've ever seen you do. <laughs> it was so fun. Carissa, meanwhile, can use a stop at her husband's cafe, Banan, to not just snack, but decompress. I would like the pumpkin crunch. Pumpkin crunch? Oh, <sighs> oh wow. I put a lot of pressure on myself. There's been moments in the past three years where like, I've wanted to give up. Like I've wanted to just like take a break, not do the tour. But there's something subconsciously that I don't even like, just there's not even like words in my head, but there's just this feeling like I'm not done yet. And like, I still have stuff to offer. And I still have like, I still have um, a lot to give. So I'm going to follow that little inner voice. The reason a world title is so important to me is I just feel that whatever you do in life, why would you not want to be the best at that in the world? You have the opportunity to be the best in the world at whatever you do. Why would I not want to be the best in the world? Surfing's my job and what I love and I, I do want it more than ever. I want to reach the top of that. What an epic week this is going to be. We're here at the Beach Wave and Maui Pro, the last stop for the women on the championship tour. A world title race unfolding here. Lakey Peterson, as we know, in a must-win situation. After all the battles over the long season, Lakey Peterson enters the Beach Wave or Maui Pro in second place on the Jeep leaderboard. Now, only winning the event can force a surf off with Stephanie Gilmore for the world title. The night before, I just didn't sleep. I've never been in a world title race where just me and one other girl with the forecast that we had of just incredible surf coming. Definitely, it was a different sort of nervous. The predictions of a massive swell prove accurate, with some of the largest waves to hit Honolulu in years rolling in. But Lakey will have to embark on the challenge without her coach, as Mike Parsons, who's also the commissioner of the Big Wave World Tour, has to head to Piahi when the Jaws event is called on. He had to leave for that event, given everything was on the line. And, and not that it's his fault, but that sort of threw me off when your coach has to leave in the most important event of my life. There was a few tears shed for sure. And um, we talked about it and he was just like, I'm the one who did all the surfing this year. I'm the one who put all the work in. So I can go and do that and apply myself to this event, you know, without him. It's not him doing it, it's me, and like that's you know, within me. 13 minutes to go here. Steph Gilmore victorious in the first round. Just two more heat wins away from a world title. Steph, she's gone out there. She's put on her performance. It looks solid. Lakey, it's her turn to answer back. So I went and I took the first wave and I broke my favorite board on that wave. I just felt like that set the tone and I just never clicked in. Here we go, Peterson. Bit wobbly off the bottom. Does well to hang on to it. Now needs to get some big turns done. First carve is solid. Always surfs with plenty of torque. Things not really panning out for Lakey here in this first round at the moment. So I lost my first heat and I was like, okay, it's all good. I probably need more time out there. Peterson not getting the win in round one, now forced into this sudden death round two, and all eyes are watching her now to how she's gonna perform. World number two with two wins this season has never been knocked in round two in 2018. Lakey now getting down the line. Little down carve, she'll hold that rail nice and safe and just get out of there. Still yet to see her unload today here at Honolulu Bay. I couldn't get a wave that felt like I could get in rhythm with everything. I was trying, I took a lot of waves. I gave myself quite a few opportunities, but I felt like I 
never got one that I, I could just open up and surf and that's my own fault. You know, I couldn't find the right wave. Alana Blanchard now locking into an absolute bomb at Honolulu Bay. Nice high line wrap. There's that clean style from Alana Blanchard, jamming it under the lip, critical section there. Alana lining up the lip again and drills it. Hard off the bottom, clean vertical for Blanchard. Little bit more room on the inside, hits it off the roof, stays on her feet, and turns in a solid wave here at Honolulu Bay. We'll see a lead change with that. Here we go, this is it. Lakey Peterson, maybe her last opportunity in 2018 to fight for this title. Steph just on the bluff, keeping her game face on, knowing that this situation is on the line if Lakey can't find the 6-3-4. Front side wrap again and trying to hang on to the finish. That whitewater is going to take her down. And that was that. I lost and Steph won the world title. We'll make it official. Stephanie Gilmore is now a seven time world champion, tied for the best of all time with Lane Beachley, your 2018 world champion. It's weird. I like lost Honolulu, and I think the day I lost, I was sort of like, oh, that was a great year. It's all good, it's all good. And then I had like this delayed response to kind of Honolulu and, and how I ended the year off of such a great year. And I just ended it with a bad taste in my mouth personally for how I competed and surfed. I just did bad. I'm not happy with how I ended this year at all. And I was super disappointed with myself. It was just exactly what I didn't want to happen that day and that kind of pissed me off. Mike, I had a big conversation with him because I was feeling super bummed on just how I finished the year. He was like, go back and watch Snapper this year. Go back and watch Bali. Go back and watch j -Bay where I got second. I had a great event because I still did do those events and did well. Three key little times this year where if things had gone slightly different, I probably would have won the world title. And just like knowing how close I was, it definitely, makes me want it more because I feel like it's so doable. The north shore of Oahu may be teeming with world-class surf breaks, but it's the Bonsai Pipeline that's the crown jewel of the surfing world. And for Julian Wilson, an improbable win here in 2014 at the Billabong Pipe Masters gave him a taste for what the wave can offer. I never dreamed of winning pipe. I come from a place where it's like, you're very lucky to get a head dip of a barrel. It doesn't really happen. And to even like think about winning an event like the Pipe Masters was just like too far away. That I'd never had that expectation. And then, so that blew me away that, that I have that. That's it's really, really special to me and definitely a highlight. After a month in Australia, Julian is now returned to the North Shore. He's currently in second place on the Jeep leaderboard. And to overtake frontrunner and familiar foe Gabriel Medina, Wilson needs to win here again to have any shot at his first world title. I've come to Hawaii 10 days before the event, give myself plenty of time to get ready. I'm excited for, for what's to come the next couple of weeks. There's an incredible opportunity. It's kind of like the deciding factor. And I think that's what's so exciting about this wave. Three guys have a shot at winning the title. It's come down to us. So I've been in the water, I think, for three of the last five world titles as they've fallen. Not being the champion, but being in the water when those titles are crowned, it's unbelievable. And it's been a motivating factor on top of my burning desire to win. You know, if you've made it this far and you've qualified to have a shot at the title, prove yourself here at Pipeline. I want to create that for myself. Getting eliminated from the contest has ended Lakey Peterson's title hopes for the year. 
though Carissa Moore, always a favorite at this event, entered the competition ready to challenge herself against the best waves Honolulu Bay can offer. Carissa Moore, I mean, does anyone surf this wave better than her? I don't think so, Pots. This is a massive swell. It's six to eight foot pumping. It was incredible to see the ladies step up. So I think it was really good to see us in those conditions. Though Stephanie Gilmore has already clinched the world title, Carissa can still finish the season in the top three with a victory. I've realized for a long time now that when I perform at my best, it's when I'm happy and I'm free and I'm not caught up in what everyone else is doing. I'm purely focused on me and what I can control. And so for me, it was just like a mental challenge to stay in that confident, happy place. Here comes Carissa Moore, big takeoff. Well overhead section, pulls right under the hood. Carissa Moore makes it. There were some good sized waves coming through and I was like, okay, I, I gotta step up. Carissa Moore on one of the bigger waves of the day, locks in, somehow hangs on as she comes into contact with that big falling lip, goes to that grab rail cutback, so solid. More than winning the contest, it was like, I wanna show up and push my limits and I wanna be able to get more comfortable in the big surf and be grateful for this opportunity to surf this wave with only a couple of people out. I can improve my surfing so much, so let's just embrace the opportunity and it's gonna be challenging, but I think if I didn't step outside my comfort zone, I wouldn't be as stoked as I am now. Carissa Moore looking to get things started with a beautiful barrel rod here in semi-final number two. I was just really stoked with my performance. Like I watched it again and I was like, oh, I look comfortable. And I'm kind of commanding myself in a bigger scenario, so I was stoked with that. Carissa Moore survives the semi-finals and gets a shot at a third victory here at the Beach Wave of Maui Pro. She'll be taking on Malia Manuel. Going into the final, I mean, for me, whenever I make a final, it's like, oh, the work is done. This is a cherry on top. Win or lose, I think, I just felt like I was winning at life in that moment. Finally getting things started. Malia Manuel sticking to her guns to get the first wave. It'll be into the pit. Staying low and then stood up tall in an awkward way and she'll get sent over the falls. And that'll be a small score. Carissa now with priority. I ended up getting this beautiful wave and I tucked in under the lip and I got to stand up in the barrel. Into the pit, standing up tall with the spit is Carissa Moore. Oh, it just felt so good. And then I came out, I'm like, okay, well it's not finished yet. There's this ending section, I gotta do something. I ended up like falling on my board, on my back. Now it's Carissa Moore coming around the corner. This first maneuver from Carissa Moore here, look at that beautiful carving maneuver. This one right here, are you joking? Wham, right in the pocket. Doesn't get any better than that. I ended up claiming that wave. I never claim waves, but I like looked up to the judges. I was like, what guys? Big bowl section shell to throw down the layback hammer to put that thing to bed. A 10 point ride on maneuver is probably one of the most difficult things you can do. And I uh, guess what? We just got a perfect 10. When they announced the 10, it was like, what? A 10? Those numbers aren't just given out. You know, those are earned. And I was like, wow, like just the journey to get there and then to finish the season on a perfect ride. I got so emotional. That's exactly why Carissa Moore wears the jersey number 10. She strives for excellence. And it looks like maybe her last wave ridden in 2018 will be a perfect number, all based on maneuvers. It is official, your 2018 Beach Waver Maui Pro Champion, Carissa Moore, taking her third title here at Honolulu Bay. The emotion came from finally believing in myself, being like, yeah, you are good enough, Chris. Like, you are a badass. So special, I mean, my whole family came over, and um, <laughs> the waves were perfect. Probably the best, like, comp competitive days I've ever had in my life, and, just to finish off the season like that feels so good. <laughs> I think I learned a lot about, you know, who's, um, who's going to help me the best. Oh, thanks, man. It sucks because I have to wait four months for the next contest. <laughs> but I think I just want to be able to carry that excitement, that formula, that confidence into the next season. On the final episode of All In, 
the women reflect upon a season of ups and downs and look forward to the year ahead. 2019, I just want to put together a strong season and I want to put together some performances that really leave people feeling something. My job is to win a world title. I am going to dedicate my life to doing that. The men face the biggest test of their season, the Billabong Pipe Masters. Pipe Masters is such a big deal. There's so much history involved around that event. It takes guts and grit, determination, heart. It has been a big year, 514 heat surf. There is three to go. An amazing final four here at the last event of the season. So much on the line today. Still waiting to find out who's gonna take the world title trophy. My dream is to win a world title. It keeps me up at night. I really think I can do it.